ever wondered what makes someone what they are? Have you ever wondered why Russian women look like men? I hadn't noticed. I think they kidnap men from all over the world, take them to Moscow, and turn them into Russian women. Do you? <laughs> That's what I think happened to Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> By now, he's probably a grandmother in the Ukraine. <laughs> what are you looking at? Uh, there's a man in the building over there on the 16th floor who's exercising the nude again. <clears throat> Seen Venus? Nude? <laughs> <laughs> no, just around. I think he's in the bullpen arguing with her. Or else he's in Russia being turned into a ballerina. <laughs> I'll check the bullpen first. <laughs> you cracked a good one. Thanks. I'm not. Hey, Venus. Hang on a second. No, we're talking about a style, a look, a statement. <laughs> okay, what is that outfit supposed to be saying? The Venus. Hang on, Travis. What is it saying? I'll tell you what it's saying. It's saying, trust me. Sign my deal. I know what I'm doing. Hey, just a minute. You want to know what it's saying to me? Yeah. Do not adjust your set. <laughs> Look, excuse me. Do not <laughs> adjust your set. <laughs> well, I thought you black guys knew how to dress. We do. You guys are talking about clothes? We're discussing looks. I waited while you argued about clothes. Look, style is important, Andrew. Clothes, Herb? You are what you wear. You are. Darn right. <laughs> Why don't you make him dress better? Okay. Why don't you loan him your pirate outfit? <laughs> Travis, I dress like that because I'm in show business. I got a public to consider. I don't care. Look, I just got a call from your public. Fellow by the name of uh, Rick uh, Jesperson wants to interview you for Black Life magazine. He wants to talk to you while you're on the air. I told him to come tonight. You did? Yeah, it's okay, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. Come on, we need some ink. Well, what is he going to ask me? I don't know. He said he wants to do a piece on black DJs. What do you mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? I think he means DJs were black. Black Life magazine is pretty militant, Andy. Well, who shall I have him talk to, Herb? <laughs> no, I can handle it. No problem. You'll be an inspiration to black kids everywhere. How's he going to do that? He's going to be interviewed for the press. Uh-oh. Look out for those reporters. They'll tear you to pieces. <laughs> I mean, they already have their minds made up, you know? I mean, then they just come right in here and go, whew, put the hatchet right in your back. I mean, remember last year when I did that TV interview? They killed me. Yeah, but I'm not trying to hide anything. <laughs> I wasn't trying to hide anything. Come on, Herbert, you were trying to pretend you were something you're not. Human. Okay. In a larger sense, aren't we all trying to pretend to be something that we're not? And in fact, isn't that what it is that makes us human? Where'd you get that speech? Read it on a t-shirt. <laughs> Baby, if you've ever wondered, wondered whatever became of me. I'm living on the air in Cincinnati. Cincinnati WKRP. Got kind of tired of packing and unpacking. Town to town, up and down. Cincinnati. You know what bugs me about her? <laughs> Is this a test? <laughs> Sometimes he says stuff that seems like it makes sense, and then I realize it's her that's saying it. Uh, yeah, well, life is hell, pal. <laughs> Listen, I hear you're uh, about to become famous. Yeah. And inspire black kids all over America. Oh, listen, uh, why just black kids? Because white kids don't want to grow up to be black DJs. <laughs> I did. Venus? Yeah? Um, a writer from Black Life magazine called, and he will be here at 4 o'clock. Thank you, Liz. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, have you guys noticed how you can't tell what color somebody is on the phone? Yeah, I guess so. That's right, stereotype thinking. <laughs> <laughs>
I mean, when I heard Black Life, I was expecting, say, Mama, you tell the dude I'll be here. Oh. <laughs> but he didn't. He sounded just like you. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> what do you mean, sounded just like me? I'm black. I can say folk. <laughs> That's right, Kingfish. You is. And you done. But the problem is, you sound neutral. Neutral. You mean white. <laughs> well, man. I've, I've heard you say upside your head, stuff like that. Don't worry, you can pass for black. I don't want to pass for black. I want to be black. What the hell am I saying? I don't want to do this interview. Why not? Because, man, these reporters come up here with a preconceived notion. And before you know it, they put a hatchet in your back. Who told you that? <laughs> guy? Who? Just a guy I know. Man, I've been up here with you white folks so long, I forgot what black America's all about. All I know is what I see on the Jeffersons. And that guy's gonna know that. He's gonna nail me. Are you saying that the Jeffersons is not an accurate portrait of black America? Hey, go ahead and joke, man. I'm the guy that's gonna get the hatchet in the back. Relax, man. I mean, you know, just uh, talk a lot of jive, run the dozens on the cat, and uh, don't mention your Slim Whitman collection. <laughs> have any Slim Whitman records. <laughs> Just relax, man. It's not that serious. Uh, Venus, could I say something? Yes, Mr. Carlson, where are you? I'm afraid I've overheard your conversation. I did not mean to, mind you. Of course not. It sounds to me like you're worrying too much about color and forgetting the most important thing. Which is? That you're a, a fine person with an interesting job. Right, John? It's not that interesting, they say. Uh, you don't me. Thanks, Mr. Carlson. Uh, I hope I could have been of some help. Yeah. Excuse me, Mr. Carlson. Oop, could I ask just what you were doing in the record library? Hunting for old guy Lombardo records and smoking dope. Oh. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Sure it is, but you have to eat, so let's eat together. If we were together, I don't think I could eat. <laughs> you nut. Her big guy has explained everything. Explain what? Nothing. <laughs> Herb, do you have a client coming in here this afternoon? I sure do, boss. Run and Sun Emporium is 4 o'clock. What's Run and Sun? It's a fascinating new idea from California. Yeah. You know how everyone's into this health thing, you know, running and looking tanned? Well, this place has treadmills, so you can run on them inside tanning booths. Run and sun. Get it? It's gonna be all over the city. Do not blow this one, Herb. Big guy, you know you can trust me. <laughs> you want to see me? Yes, as a matter of fact, I did. I want you to impress upon Herb how important it is that he sign new clients. Okay, why don't you tell him yourself? Oh, well, I can do that now because Herb's here, but he wasn't here when I sent for you. I was going to tell you to tell him, then I left. And of course, when I got back, uh, Herb was here. And I, I couldn't tell him, though, because you said, did you send for me? And I answered you, and so there you go. Well, so now what? Well, I don't know. What's going on? Uh, Mr. Carlson was just explaining nuclear physics to us. <laughs> I'm going to go to lunch? No, I can't. i got to get ready for this interview. Get ready? What's, what's to get ready? Uh, Mr. Carlson? Well, I can. I'm having lunch with my minister. Let's see. Uh, no, I can't afford you, and I can't afford to be seen with her, so I guess I'm just thinking about lunch all day. <laughs> Jennifer? How long have you been behind me? All my life. <laughs> Are you familiar with the term... Mercy lunch. <laughs> I, I can't believe you're really here. Just calm down, Herb, and try not to leer. Oh, but, but this, 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 this is wonderful. Herb, yeah. your tie is on the table. Whoops, there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everybody has seen me eating with you. I mean, I come here all the time. I, I know these people. I know these people. 
Her. Just, just be careful. <laughs> I don't... <gasps> oh! <laughs> My best outfit, though. I... It is. Look, can, can I ask you something? Okay. I, I, I know this is going to sound kind of weird to you, but uh, lately I've been thinking that, well, that people have been laughing at me. Really? No. I know, I know, it doesn't make a bit of sense, but somehow I think they find my clothes a little funny. Now, I, I, I spend a lot of money on clothes. I mean, I try to make a statement. What do you think? How can I put this? With what? Mr. Tarmac, your check? Tarlick. <laughs> it's really been nice having you here. Thank you. The guys in the... The guys in the kitchen say hi. Hi, back. Okay, yeah, uh, let's uh, keep it moving, okay? Yes, sir. Do you know what you need? Sure I do, but you keep turning me down. You need a new image. A whole new look. Not that you need a new look so much, but a change is always exciting, don't you think? And I think I am the person to give you a new image. I've waited for this. I'm talking about your wardrobe. Now, I know a wonderful tailor near here. I'm going to redo you just like I redid the lobby. You're going to look great. What do you say? As long as I don't look like a room. Come on, let's go. All right. I want everybody to see me leaving with you. Walking out on my arm like this. This is my proudest moment. <laughs> Gentlemen, I would like to present my latest creation, introducing the new H.R. Tarlick Jr. <laughs> That's great. Really good, Jennifer. Very lifelike. <laughs> well, uh, what do you think? My, 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 I can hardly breathe. Why, Mr. Tarlick? Have you been lunching at the club? Well, you are enough to make a poor girl just swoon right away. I uh, do look rather good, don't I? Is he programmed for polo? No. <laughs> What's happening? Are you earth, wind, or fire? I'm fire, baby, because women seek the heat. It's interesting. That's a, a cultural myth you're not denying. Because that one's true. <laughs> Didn't I see you on Let's Make a Deal? Look at threads, huh? You like? Yeah, I do. Jennifer dressed me. She's good. <laughs> Tell me about it. We had lunch together. Man, you are working out. <laughs> well, there are several things I still have to work on. Uh -huh. uh, you know, minor things, like a new personality, but, uh, I'm coming along, right, Jennifer? Right. Oh, and, uh, before I leave to visit a new client, I, I want you to know that Reaganomics is working. It's, uh, supply-side economics, not trickle-down, and we wouldn't dream of taking all the money out of social programs and, uh, giving it to big business. How's that? A little too good, her. <laughs> I don't care how militant this interview is going to be. I'm going to come out looking good in your root suit from Monsanto. Uh -oh. 
Gentlemen, good afternoon to you. Hey, Herb. Who are you trying to fool? I am going to fool the whole world, Travis. Watch me. Were there any calls for me? Oh, just President Reagan. Ronnie, I wonder what he wanted. <laughs> I was just kidding. Oh. You, you don't know the president, do you? Of course not. Hmm. May I help you? I'm Ted Jeffries, 555-4212. Five, 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 Call me, I mean it. <laughs> I'm here to see Herb Tarlick. Hello, Ted. How finally nice to meet you face to face. Damn sporting of you to drop by like this. Beautiful place you got here. Yes, indeed. Uh -huh. uh, can we chat in here? Yeah. Can I get you a refreshment of some sort? Tea, perhaps? Are you American? <laughs> <laughs> And finally, this reporter joins the world press in congratulating the royal couple on the upcoming birth of their child. We'll be watching the dates very carefully. <laughs> That's all the news and then this on Love to the Minute. Stay tuned now for Venus Flytrap and the music. Thanks, Les. Welcome, people, and stay with me while I take you home with a little help from Mr. Bob Marley. You'll always be with us. Take off, Les. Why? Les, there's a guy coming up here from a black magazine. I don't want you around explaining the black experience to him. Wait, you've always let me chat with your black friends before. I enjoy it. Notice I didn't say Negro. <laughs> Les, please. I'm a little nervous about this, man. See, Black Life magazine is really hard-hitting. I mean, they're into being black. I mean, into it. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, I don't, Venus, but I can see you're upset, so I'll do what you say and leave. Thanks, Les. Well, it's always a pleasure to help a friend. Especially a black friend. <laughs> This is Venus. Hey, bro, what's happening? Hey, blood, what it is? <laughs> Who's this dude? That's Rick Jesperson. You're not black. No, I work for a black magazine. You do? Uh-huh. Well, I'll see you guys later. Have a good interview. Thank you. Thank you. I've really been looking forward to this. Me too. Thanks. I gotta tell you, though, you kind of threw me there. I'm sorry. I didn't know you'd be white. I thought this was a black station. It's a white station. I'm white. My magazine's black. I'm black. We're an equal opportunity employer. Same here. We're pretty militant about it, too. Me, too. Well, good. Let's talk. About what? How about race? I don't think that much about it. Me neither. Have a seat. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I think one of the great Follies of advertising is this trend toward tastelessness. <laughs> Do you realize that the last business I was in was made illegal? I'm a slime bucket. I'm tasteless. I like it. <laughs> Hello. Excuse me, man. I'll be with you. Just a second. into the evening. It's 35 degrees, my children. Tonight's gonna be kind of slippery, so drive carefully. This is WKRP with Venus. And Love is on the Rise. Brought to you by the pride of Atlanta, Mr. Evo Bryson. You were saying? Oh, I was saying I'm the only person of another color at the magazine. Do you have any idea what it's like to be that much in the minority? Must be rough. <laughs> oh, it is. See, we're still fairly small in the market. You know, somewhere in the middle. The place is really screwed up, actually. But it's still a nice place to work. We're privately owned. We're run by this great, kind-hearted guy. Well, his mother actually owns a thing. <laughs> but we're all loyal to him. For me, it's, it's kind of weird, though, everybody being one color and me being another. It gets in the way sometimes. How bad? Like, we got a couple of really good-looking girls at the magazine. But what can I do? I mean, I, whenever I'm around them, I feel like I always have to be careful, you know? I'll be darned. 
I feel funny when I put my hand on their shoulder. I mean, that kind of thing. Anyway, the point is, I've really gotten to know and love these people. And I realize, and I know this is a cliche, but I realize that people are people, and you are who you are, and you link yourself to people you love, no matter what you are or what they are. Anyway, enough about me. Let's talk about you. Well, uh, we're still a pretty small market, uh, somewhere in the middle. Uh, place is pretty screwed up, but it's a nice place to work. We're still privately owned, but we're run by a great, kind-hearted guy. Uh-huh. Do you ever write away for a Slim Whitman album? <laughs> Uh, why don't you uh, sip your tea and, and sell your time to Gucci or somebody? Ted, baby, just wait a minute. Now, now, deep down inside, I'm just like you. Worse, even. You're too fancy for me. You don't understand the needs of a guy like me. I need to talk to a salesman who talk my language. No, 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 no. You don't understand. It's just the clothes. Look, look, look. Come back tomorrow, and I'll have a suit on that'll make you air sick. I mean, <laughs> trust me. Yeah. Now he's talking down to me. What do you think, I'm stupid? What's with you Harvard types with your little crocodiles on your shirts? <laughs> I don't need you. I need you. Five, 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 Call on the advertising agencies. They like people who dress like that. <laughs> they already know me. Show them the new you. Let me put it another way. They already loathe me. Oh. <laughs> then, Herb, you are right and I am wrong. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah. And I want you to remember this moment because it's never going to happen again. You are right because you know your clients and territory better than I do. Therefore, you know better how to present yourself. I am wrong because I don't know the kind of people you associate with and probably never will. <laughs> now, I want you to go down to the garage, and look at all the cars, pick out the seat covers you like best and wear them home. <laughs> Thanks, Jennifer. And they all say you're a pretty nice guy. What they don't say is for a white guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. One last thing. Don't you feel silly dressed like that? Yeah, just a little. All the hip dudes down at the magazine dress like that guy. <laughs> See ya. Uh, how'd your interview go? Ah, uh, okay. He talked about himself mostly. Got an identity crisis. Yeah, same here. <laughs> Me too. I wonder if Slim Whitman has anything to do with this. <laughs> uh, what about you? Did you ever have an identity crisis? I don't think so. Yeah, I guess not. Although, sometimes, just for a second, I think I'm perhaps mentally unbalanced, because all I think about are men, any man, as long as he's well-dressed. And I just want to, you know, <laughs> be with him. But then it goes away, it always does. <laughs> on wood. 